All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to today's video. Sorry about the audio in the last video. Hopefully it's better today. Um, let me know if it's not. I appreciate your patience. So let's get into today's video. Today we'll be talking about soft fever, which is a different form of Bamboo Studio or a fork of Bamboo Studio that offers some other capabilities that you might be interested. I know a lot of you are hobbyists and even maybe professional or semi-professional 3D uh, print people. I'm just a hobbyist that has some high-end stuff, um, but I don't tinker with this every single day. Um, so I'm definitely looking at this from that angle as a hobbyist that doesn't do a whole lot of tinkering. So I looked at it and, and thought, you know, why would I use Soft Fever instead of just a normal Bamboo Studio? And we'll get into that today. So sit back, relax, let me get everything set up. Len Dizzle Production. All right, so as I was saying in the intro, Soft Fever is a fork of Bamboo Studio. So what does that really mean? To me, that means that it offers something different or they're doing something different or they're, you know, they're offering something that we can benefit from. So I looked at it and I thought, what is that thing that it offers that nobody else does or that the other, that Bamboo Studio doesn't offer? And I can answer that in one word from what I've looked at so far, and that's calibration. Uh, so the big thing here is you can calibrate every single one of your filaments. Um, so you can run some calibration tests, some flow rate tests, some temperature tests. All of that stuff is built into Soft Fever to make it really, really easy to integrate filaments into your prints. So if you really want to fine tune stuff in a very, very easy way, Soft Fever can help you do that with its calibration tab. So today I have some eSun filament. So let's go ahead and go through the process of uh, calibrating this to my Bamboo X1 Carbon. So let me get this loaded up and we'll get started. All right, so here we are in the Soft Fever. I'll leave a link in the description um, from GitHub where you can download this. But as you can see, it looks pretty familiar to what we're used to, maybe a different color of green here. The tab that we'll be focused on today and the one that you won't see in Bamboo Studio is this calibration tab. So I went ahead and I loaded this uh, orange filament here from eSun. And as you can see, I put in the printer generic PLA, selected that orange color. And what we'll do now is go ahead and open this up. And what we want to do is change the name of this and save it. Okay, so how we're going to do that is we're going to hit save. And I'm going to go ahead and name this the filament that it is. So this is eSun PLA Plus in orange. And hit OK. So here in a little bit, we'll be messing with the flow ratio, the pressure advance, temperature, all of that stuff. So we want to make sure that we have a preset for this so that we are saving um, all of our findings from these tests to this preset so that when we use it in the future, we can um, you know, know that it's, it's fine-tuned for what we need it to do. So once we have that set and saved and we have our eSun PLA plus orange in there, let's go ahead and close out of here and let's go ahead and start with calibration. So the first thing that we'll look at is there is actually a tutorial that goes through all of this. So let me pull that up for us. All right, so in this tutorial, it shows us how to go through everything and set everything up. And we're gonna start at the top and go to the bottom as it's shown in the calibration. So the first thing that we're gonna do is temperature. So let's go down to the temp tower here and see what it says. Temp tower is straightforward test, vertical tower of multiple blocks, once a print is complete, we can examine each block and determine the optimal temperature for that filament. The optimal temperature is the one that produces the highest quality print with the least amount of issues such as stringing, layer adhesion, warping, overhanging, and bridging. So we'll go ahead and run this test on this filament and see which one of the temperatures works the best. So here we are back in the Soft Fever Studio. We'll go to our temperature test. 
type of filament PLA. We'll leave all of this the same. It's going to go from 190 to 235 degree steps. We'll go ahead and do that. You'll notice that it selected the first filament here, which is another PLA one that I've already set up. We'll set that second one here and we'll go ahead and slice it. And it's going to take about an hour and 21 minutes. Okay, so we have the correct filament bed leveling. We don't really need to do time lapse. We don't really need to do on this flow calibration. We will do it on this one, but we won't need to do flow calibration in the future. That's what this whole calibration will do is determine our flow calibration and then we'll never need to run this test again. So I'll have it run it here on the cool plate, but for the next few tests, we won't be running uh, the flow calibration. So we'll go ahead and get this printed. All right, so the temperature test is done. So let's take a look at it here and we'll pull it off the build plate. I don't know how well you can see this or not, but really there's no stringing or anything like that all the way up. What I'm looking at now is all the needles here. And really the ones at 200 and 205 look the best. Yeah, man, they're all pretty strong. It is trying to separate right at that 200. Separated at the 205, but that is the weakest point in the middle. Between that 200 and 210 looks the best. We'll go with 205 and stay there because it didn't split in the 205. It split right where, you know, the weakest part of it is. And then if you just look at the quality of the little needles right here, that one looks the best. We'll go with 205. All right, now that we have the temperature test done, we'll go ahead and edit the filament for that temperature. And we found that 205 was where it was at. Now this may be too low. We'll find out in some other tests, but at least from that test, that's the one that looked the best to me. There was a couple of strings, little tiny strings that you could see in some of the other ones. But that 205 to 210 seemed to look the best, at least from that test. So we'll go from there. So once that's done, we'll go ahead and save it. We want to save it again as that filament there. Hit OK. And we'll get to the next test. Now, if you've only done this test and you want to go print another project, do not just delete this and put your project in here. You're still in calibration mode you need to go to file and hit new project if you're gonna do that. Make sure you do that if you're going to go from a calibration to a print, make sure to hit new project and get out of calibration mode. All right, so the next one on the list is flow rate pass one. So let's take a look at that, we'll change the color and let's take a look at what it says in the tutorial. All right, so here we are in the tutorial and we're looking at flow rate so select the printer, all of that. We did this part. Select pass one in the calibration, a new project with nine blocks. Each will go with a different flow rate modifier. All right, and we'll be looking for which one of these is smooth. All right, so once we get this printed, we'll come back here because there is some math that we're gonna have to use depending on which one of these it does. So let's go back to the slicer. We'll go ahead and slice that. Looks like it's gonna take 32 minutes and change. Here's a place where we're gonna make a little bit of a difference. All right, so once it's sliced, the only two things that we're gonna need checked are the bed leveling and enable AMS. What we're essentially doing now is the flow calibration. So from here on forward, we shouldn't need to do flow calibration at all. 
once we've got the filament calibrated. I'm not going to do any time lapse on this, so let's level the bed and enable the AMS, and I'll see you when it gets done. All right, so here's the first test. And basically what you need to do here is just feel each of them. And you can kind of feel a difference with these. And you might want to rub your finger. You can hear that there's a difference in the roughness of which each one of these are. So you really want to pay attention to which one's the smoothest. And for me, it's the one that has a five on it. <clears throat> and that's important. So do this test, see which one is the smoothest for you, and pay attention to which number that is, and I'll meet you back in Soft Fever. All right, now that we've run our first test and we know which one of these that we like, which is this one right here, the number five, now we need to go and do the math that I was showing you before. And what we'll need for that is the flow ratio that it, it is currently under, which is 0.98. So we'll take that and go back to the tutorial and show you the math from there. All right, so the formula that we're gonna have to use here is your old flow ratio times 100 plus the modifier. And this modifier is the result of the test, which for us was the five. All of that divided by 100, and that'll give you the new modifier. And strangely enough, this is exactly what I came up with on the eSun as well. And I actually made a Excel spreadsheet that shows that. So the generic was 0.98. The one that we liked the most was the one that had the five on there. So the math is already done for us. It's 1.029. Here's a picture of Excel. And under new flow ratio, if you want to use that formula and set everything up the same way, you can use this for the other tests as well. It's, there's some more formulas that you'll have to use with this as well on the second test. Um, so if you want to use this one, there's the formula and how I set it up. All right, so now that we have our new flow ratio, we'll go ahead and type that in. And that's 1.029. We'll go ahead and save that. We want it under that one, close out of here. We'll delete this. We'll go ahead and hit new project just in case, discard everything from the old calibration. And now we'll do flow rate pass two. And as you can see here, it's the same type of little cards that we'll be printing out. We'll be paying attention to these numbers as well. And um, we'll be using that same formula again. So we'll go ahead and get this sliced. And then we'll print the plate. And again on here, we're not gonna do the time lapse. I don't think we really need to do the bed leveling, but we'll go ahead and do that. And we don't need to do the flow calibration again. So we'll go ahead and send that to the printer. Looks like about 30 minutes for that. We'll send it to the printer and I'll see you when it gets done. All right. So now that we're done with that test, we'll go ahead and give it the fingernail test. And I went ahead and did this before, and honestly, the zero is the one that's the smoothest to the finger as well as to the fingernail. So that's the one that we'll go with. All right, back in Soft Fever, and we'll go back into our filament settings. So now make sure that you put this flow ratio into your Excel sheet or however you're doing the math and update everything. As you can see here with mine, since it was zero, nothing needed to change, even though the math is still there, it's still 1.029. So I'm gonna go ahead and update that here and you update whatever you came up with on yours. So the next thing that we'll be testing is the pressure advance. And up to this point, we haven't had pressure advance checked, but we will go ahead and check pressure advance. We're gonna go ahead and hit save hit OK, come out of there, and we'll go to the calibration and we'll hit the pressure advance. We do have a direct drive extruder for the Bamboo X1, so we'll leave that the same. I prefer to use the line here instead of the tower. If you'd like to see what the tower is about, go to the tutorial and read about that. But we're gonna do the line here. I'm gonna leave everything else the same, and I'm gonna hit OK. You'll see that this says PA test right here, pressure advance test, and it's still in the black. 
we want to make sure that we change that to the filament slot that we're doing, which is the second one, which is the orange one. And this isn't what the test actually looks like. We'll hit the slice button and you'll be able to see what that looks like. And what it's going to do is print out all of these different lines. And what we're going to look for is which line of these has the best consistency from left to right. Okay, and once we get that, we'll go in here and we'll update this pressure advance number with the corresponding number here of the best one that it did. So again, we'll hit print plate. Again, we don't need to do flow calibration. I'm not going to do a time lapse on this one. And we'll leave the bed leveling on there. I'm not sure how, how much you need that on all of these, but we'll leave it on there just in case. So we'll go ahead and print this and I'll see you when it gets done. All right, so what we're looking for is consistency in these lines, not really the consistency on the numbers. However, we, we, we will need those numbers, but I guess there's an acceleration point and a deceleration point. And you can kind of see, I don't know how well you can see in the camera there. Let me try to get it out of the light, but you can see a brake line in it right there and right there. And what you're looking for is the one that's the smoothest across. And where it sits right now is on this point two zero, which looks pretty good. All of these right here, point three two, point two zero, point two four, all look good. And then you can start to see a difference again. And these, so let's see over here. Point three two and point yeah. 0 0.32, 0 0.20, 0 0.24. Okay, now that we're back over in Soft Fever, we'll take a look at the filament that we just did and the pressure advance that we found was the best was the 0 0.032. So we'll go ahead and save that. And then we're done. Although I would recommend really running through this whole test again, what I'm going to do here is run through that whole test again and get it close. All of the rest of the eSun PLA plus filaments, I don't foresee them being much different, but I might run a couple of them. If I'm going to run more of the eSun stuff there, I might run a couple more of those through this test just to make sure that they're the same. I didn't change a whole lot on this, but we'll see in the second round of test. Um, but I would recommend to, you know, at least do all of these tests twice and then update everything in there. Um, I hope this was helpful. I hope this helps everybody. And uh, this seems to be like a really cool thing. I know that all of these tests are probably out there on printables and Thingiverse and everything like that. But it is cool that is it's included with the uh, slicer here and all kind of built in. Um, so that's kind of cool as well. And the other thing that this can be used for is other printers other than the bamboo printer. So I think you can use this on the Voron as well. So if you have the Voron, I think you can use this on, on there as well. But that's it for me today. Long enough video. I hope this was helpful. See you guys in the next one.